Okay. Thanks for joining us today for the Georgetown Entertainment Media Alliance externship panel. I'm really grateful for uh, my group of externs for joining me at, uh, at noontime in this beautiful day. So for those of you who are joining and you might be wondering a little bit more about GEMA. So GEMA is, it stands for the Georgetown Entertainment Media Alliance. Um, it was founded by uh, an alum named Rich Batista. And he had this idea to have students, seniors and graduate students uh, apply for an opportunity to go to either LA or New York for spring break for a week and meet with a series of alumni in either one-on-ones or group sessions. So if you are on the call and you're a senior um, or you will be a senior, or if you're a graduate <laughs> student and you're thinking about applying and wondering what the process was like, uh, you'll hear from this year's group of, of externs about the the good the bad the indifferent anything anything about that process that they might they might want to share so just to start um everyone on the call that who who are panelists they're all they're all seniors so they don't have to say you know what year they are they're all seniors there's no grad students in this particular panel and just if you could say your name and um your major because that could be helpful i think if anyone wants to get in contact with you afterwards and then where you went, whether to LA or New York. And I'm literally just gonna go down as I see them. And Amy, you are up first. Uh, yeah, hi, my name's Amy. I'm a history major in the college um, and I went to New York. Let's see me, Alex. Hi everyone, yeah, my name is Alex. I am a double major in English and history and I went to New York. Erin? Hi, sorry for my background, it's a little noisy, but I'm an English major, a media studies minor, and I went to LA. Thanks, Aaron. Ryan? Hey, y'all, I'm Ryan. Um, like Aaron, I also went to LA, and I'm a marketing and management double major in the MSB. And Doritza. Hey, guys, I'm in college, majoring in English with minors in linguistics and public media studies. And I'm Oh, and I think, so Adrita went to LA because I think that just cut you off right at the end, but I will tell everyone she went to LA. <laughs> All right, so starting with the first, um, and we're gonna just have time for you guys to ask, uh, ask questions or, and, and just the panelists to have some informal kind of chat. But um, I will say that the application opens at, on the Kali Career Education Center. And if you just did GEMA, Kali, um, that'll pop right up and it'll be the old one, but it'll come live on the website, the application. Uh, as soon as you come back from school, usually uh, it might be a day or two late, but it's, it's open then. And it usually closes. I want to say early November is usually the close date. So, and I'm not going to go in any particular order, but does anyone have any um, reflections on, on the actual process of application? It was just to remind you his resume cover letter um, and references. Anything that you want to reflect on that process? I have something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I felt very comfortable throughout the application process. And, you know, I, I, the, even if you don't have a lot of experience in the particular field that you're interested in, my sense is just from the social dynamics of the in-person interview and even the like written in written application that uh, this is a group of alumni and administrators who want to help you that they, they, they want to uh, really help you connect with those in, the industry you're interested in to help you reach your goals. So I felt really comfortable. I could just talk about all the stuff that I've worked on over the last four years and things that I'm deeply passionate about. But I really did get the sense that this was a group that was trying to make uh, Georgetown's like amusement park of connections as accessible to people as possible. Because ultimately the goal I think of this program is to help expand Georgetown's network in this industry. So of course, logically speaking, they would want to make that as accessible and widely used as possible. And that definitely came through okay i also so, thought the the application wasn't taxing at all it was just like you're getting yourself together it was very quick to do um and i think i did it maybe a couple of weeks before we do i know it's open early but like you have to stay on top of when the application comes out because like, like i honestly didn't know and i probably would have missed it if i had it. And you have friends like i have friends like mine is my good friend and monique she also did the externship in new york um, and so friends that like kind of update you and keep you in the know of what's happening. And I applied and 
um, making sure you also have good connections with your professors to write you a recommendation. Um, because if, you do, if you're not connecting with professors, I mean, they're not going to be able to write you anything to speak to your character, to speak to what you write. And I honestly think because of the recommendation I got, I think that's why I got into Jima. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, building those connections with my professor to kind of make take make like make sure that I uh, had this opportunity like this. So I'm very thankful for that. So please make sure you do that. Yeah, Ryan, I, I saw you like emphasizing Aaron, you know, about the references. Anything you want to say about references? Yeah, I would say references throughout my undergraduate career if that's what we want to call it, have, have been very important. Um, and like Aaron, I got my, I actually got my reference from my supervisor at one of my jobs on campus. Um, I'm a peer career advisor in the MSB. So Talia Schatz did my recommendation. And I absolutely think that um, that helped. I mean, we work together every day. So she kind of pretty much knows me personally and professionally. So that was great. But the only thing I would add that I think may be helpful to um, the audience is that there's a lot of diversity as far as like where we are in our entertainment career, you know, stages or exploration of a potential entertainment career. Um, so for example, I am going to Google after graduation. So I have a full-time job. I pretty much already know um, what I'm gonna be doing, where I'm gonna be living um, after graduation. But we also have folks who have, don't have a job, who have no idea what they're gonna do after graduation. We have folks who have wanted to do entertainment since they got to Georgetown, but there are also folks who thought they wanted to do medicine, for example. And now they're like, I don't want to do medicine anymore. I want to do entertainment. So I just want to demystify that process and say in your application process that you absolutely shouldn't feel the pressure to have everything all figured out before you apply or before you do the externship. Because I think in many ways, that's the point of the externship to help you figure it out. Amy, Dorita, anything that you can think of during that application time that, that you wanted to highlight? If not, no worries. Or just to affirm, um, I like had no idea what I wanted to do and like going into this and in my application as well, I kind of just signified my interests. Um, and so, yeah, I think it just speaks to like the diversity of the cohort as well as like um, of our experience within the fields. Yeah, I would second that. Um, I, my only experience like in entertainment is taking film classes at Georgetown really. Um, and I've tried, like, I've had internships in the past that have kind of been tangential. Sorry for the background noise. Um, and yeah, I think like throughout the whole process, like even the application process, it started then when I, it was like asking me what I might be interested in, um, in terms of like the, the specific like subsets of entertainment that I want to explore. I had no idea what I wanted to explore. So I had to look up like what everything meant. And like that just pushed me to do research into figuring out what it is I might want to even think of, like, touching on the trip, you know? Well, thanks, Teresa. As, as you, all of you were talking, I, I am paying attention. I'm just, like, putting things down because I want to make sure that if, if you all didn't cover it, that I at least touched on it. So um, application process is resume, cover letter, um, and references. Uh, you can add a work sample, I think, if you want. A lot of people don't. Um, so that's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, since I am the, the industry advisor in, in, in the media area, please feel free to meet with me beforehand. Uh, I also sit on the panel, so it's like I'm pretty much a part of the process throughout. So definitely feel free to reach out and we can do a resume cover letter review just to see if that how that looks. Um, references. Yes, use your professors. Use who knows you well and can talk to your skills, especially if you do have some skills in media. So that's great. And, and in Ryan's case, like he's been doing work on campus. So with someone who is a staff member on campus could speak, speak highly about him. So whoever can speak highly about your skills is, is helpful. So that's just my little notes um, on that piece. And I am pretty much a stickler with everything. I try to keep everything kind of um, uh, to end it if it's like November. It's usually November 1st or 2nd. So really try to have everything in by, by those those times, including um, including references as well. I understand if references sometimes don't come on time and I, I will give a, maybe a tiny bit of grace, but I don't give too much grace because it's not fair for people who were um, pretty structured about the process. So that's a little bit of notes just on the application, but yes, I think in terms of like application processes around campus, this one's not, not terribly taxing. So if you come through and you get selected to go to that next point, um, then it's the, like, it's the interview point. Uh, 
we do, we do a series of, oh gosh, they're quick. They're quick interviews. It's a, I want to say there's four or five of us on the panel and in the before times they were in person here at Kali, but since the pandemic, it's been virtual and it's worked really well for working professionals who are all across DC. So it very well might stay virtual just because of the ease. And we really meet with each student for about it's five minutes, but we're even thinking about less, uh, which is crazy. But you really get a sense of the passion for the for who you are, what you want to do um, in, in that short amount of time. So I always tell my students who who come in to see me prior, it's that really be excited about whatever it is that you want to do. Um, be, be your authentic self and and that really will carry you through. So now um, I would like to ask anybody's reflections on just the the actual interview process. Um, and I won't go in order, just if anybody wants to do any shout out. Um, like, oh, sorry. You can no, go. no, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, I was going to say, like Jackie said, it's very, very quick. Like when you log in, you log out basically. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so you have to really convey your passion and like speak to what you wanted, what, what you think you want to do, what you really like about it. Um, and just let it shine through, like be your authentic self, because honestly, you don't have a lot of time. So it's not a lot of time for you to like try to find your words or fumble. You just have to just say what you want. Like, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. And answer to make sure you're answering the questions and listening to the questions, um, because they are direct questions that you're asking for and it's very specific. So making sure you answer those, but also read your passion and just be yourself. It's, it's really, it's really not, it's really not that, um, it's really not that scary. As soon as you get in, like everyone's smiling and happy and you're like, I'm smiling and happy too. I'm having a good time. And then you answer the questions and that's it. That's true. Everyone was really smiling and happy. <laughs> well, one trick I found that worked really well is just if, if you're enthusiastic about this, you know, you can have a degrees of experience, right? You don't have to be, you don't have to de have dedicated the last four years of your Kajorshan career to your area of interest. But if you're enthusiastic about entertainment, then like tap into that in those five minutes. Because yes, it's brief, but you really want to demonstrate in, the, in those, that very short period of time that you love this stuff. So, you know, open your eyes wide, talk loud, be excited, like <laughs> demonstrate that from the heart sincerity. And I, just personally found that that went a long way. In addition to what Alex just said, I would say that I think the thing that was most helpful for me, um, but looking back at it in hindsight, was to have clarity around why I wanted to do the program. Like I applied to a, a, a bunch of things, a million things, a thousand things, you know, throughout the school year. And I've done that since freshman year. I mean, Aaron can attest to that. But there are some things you apply to where you're just like, okay, I'm sure if I get it, it'll be great. It'll help me out. Let me just throw in the application. I'm not going to block my blessings. Like, perfect. If it works out, great. And then there are other things where you actually have to do the research and figure out why you want to do it. Because in the event that you do move on in the process, you need to be very clear <laughs> and communicate expressly um, how you'll benefit from the program. And so I think for me, one of the questions that I remember getting was, okay, well, you pretty much have some great contacts in the industry. You have a job already. Like, why exactly are you wanting to do this program? <laughs> And I think if I didn't have clarity around what I would benefit from it, because I obviously wasn't looking for directly a job out of the um, program, then I don't think that I would have been um, perceived as benefiting from the program. So my biggest piece of advice is just to do the self-reflection, do the work and get specific about what you want to get out of the program. Even if you don't know if you wanna do development or programming or marketing or distribution, that part will change. Um, it can change, it definitely will change once you do the externship, but as long as you know what you hope to get out of the program, I think that goes a long way. Yeah, um, Aaron and I um, had a lot of meetings together when we were both in LA. Um, and I came out of every single meeting being like, oh my God, that sounds awesome. And like people were talking about things on like opposite ends of like production or something. Um, and it's like, I truly don't know what I want to do after graduation or like in the media um, and entertainment industries, but like, I now know so much. Like I came back to my housemate saying like, I'm way smarter now in such a specific way. Like I know, I feel like I've learned so much about this like pretty insular like thing, like entity that has a life of its own that I didn't even know about. 
Um, like, I feel like that is what I came away with. And like, I went into the application process and the interview process expressing that, like, I might want to move across the country. Like I'm from Maryland and like, I need to know if this is something that I really, really love and like can commit to in, in that, like such a way. Um, and I came out of it, like totally in love. Uh, I just made it clear that like I wanted to learn and that's exactly what I did. Oh, this is fun. You know, so we're getting to that part where I, I get to learn what, what all happened during New York and LA, but we're not there yet. So I'm just, I'm just going to, oh, I'm excited though, because Teresa got me, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I want to know what happened in LA. I was in New York a little bit. So I have a sense of what was going on there. Anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to the questions. Um, okay. Prior to the trip. So after, you know, clearly this was, this was our, a group of students who were successful and they, they got through that, that round and they were, they were chosen on all those reasons that they, they talked about. They had enthusiasm, they had targeted the reason for why they wanted to do the program. They were authentic, all, all of those things. So they were chosen. And then in, um, after, after students are chosen and we, as the committee, we send this group of students to uh, the head of GEMA, which is Rich Batista. And he looks over the students and basically says, sounds good. And then I'm allowed to, to email all of the students back with good news. So that's the, that's the next part of the process. After that, the names of the students then go to schedulers in LA and New York. And so that's where they do kind of the behind the scenes of like trying to figure out, okay, uh, what have the students been doing for these four years and what do they want to do and who best, who, who would be a good match for them? So they start kind of set, setting up um, interviews each, each day. So that's happening kind of behind the scenes. They're contacting by email or phone um, the externs to get a better sense of who they are. So that's happening. My part of the process at that point is, is almost complete. Um, the last part is we do a, a, an orientation prior to, um, prior to the externship, usually a month, month and a half before. And that's when I review networking techniques, or I try to bring in externs from previous years, because there is, it's unlike, um, it acts in some ways like a study abroad program where you're fairly independent, you just kind of get yourself there and you're gone, like you just, you just figure it out, um, which is unlike a lot of other very structured experiential opportunities at Georgetown, where you might be going as a group and it's very, you're going and you're walking through it together. So this is very independent in nature. So there's a lot of nerves, I think, leading into, into that part. So I think that's where I want to linger now is the kind of your chief concerns prior. And you can talk about funding too, because, and I will say, honestly, we are trying and have desperately tried to get this funded. We're getting some success in it. Um, but, you know, funding is is a challenge because it's not fully funded yet, but we always find a way to find money. So for those of you that, that want to speak to that, please tell, tell all of us how that was like for you. Um, maybe scheduling, because I know that's also something that's challenging beforehand. Schedules don't come together until the very end. Um, networking. So anything concerns before the trip, um, that's it, go. <laughs> I have stuff on that front. Um, so I have a friend who lives in like the upper, upper Northern Bronx. And so I ended up staying with his parents. He goes to NYU and I like stayed in his room <laughs> while, while during the trip. And, you know, it was wonderful because it was out of the city a little bit. Um, but it meant that my Ubers to get into the city were at like 60 to 70 bucks. Or I could take the subway uh, where I'd have to like do a seven, $7 Uber to the subway station and then an hour and a half in. And, you know, I just could not bring myself to pay the $70 every morning and every afternoon. Um, but because of the uh, the small stipend, it was it's actually pretty decent, a decent stipend from uh, uh, Rich Batista, who runs the program. I was able to kind of, while living as frugally as possible, I could afford to take some of those Uber in when I needed to. And so one thing I'd encourage you to do is like, if you have that stipend and or you're like blessed to have those resources, like make your life easy <laughs> on the trip. Just like, don't you know, take the Ubers if you need to, you know, buy yourself water, like get nice food during the day, like give yourself those little luxuries because you need all the energy you can get, but highly recommend you apply for the stipend and make your life as easy as possible. Otherwise, um, on ter in terms of the concern that I had, like I was, I, everything I want to do in life is in New York. And so I was very tempted to email as many people as possible and ask for extra, um, 
extra meetings. I was like bothered when I and only a couple people ended up having availability. And I had this like entire open day on Thursday with like two meetings in the morning and the rest was open. But I realized very quickly, like I needed that day. So don't be too tempted to fill up every spare second with extra stuff. <laughs> don't do it because you will find that you get exhausted very quickly. Like even if you're an extrovert or a networker and you just love talking with people and uh, you will be get, get exhausted just from, especially if you're coming, you don't, you didn't grow up in a city or you're coming from Georgetown and going into a city, like the culture shock was, was more than I expected. Like it will tire you out. And so give yourself breaks, give yourself little luxuries every now and then use the stipend to buy yourself nice Ubers instead of the subway if you need to, especially late at night. Um, so that, those are some tips. <laughs> Um, maybe just speak a little bit about how the schedule come, came together. Um, I don't think I found out until maybe two days before we left what my schedule was. Um, and I think some people have expressed that there's like a worry that like you um, of not knowing so soon. So do you have the time to kind of research these people and look them up and have good questions to ask? Um, and I think it kind of just comes as you um, as you're learning it, because I think like because there I had like clarity on like what I wanted out of the program going in I think I already had a lot of questions um and then when I got the list and I was able to look everyone up on LinkedIn or or whatever um the like, questions kind of just like naturally come and there were so um and I found that as the week progressed as well like because I was learning so much and um there's so many like kind of new and different avenues um, of the industry that I hadn't known about before. Like, um, I guess your approach to every meeting, I think, changes and is fluid. So I think maybe like um, being open with fluidity and being open with kind of um, uh, not knowing exactly like everything going into it um, is um a good mindset to have. Thanks, Amy. I will quickly add, I completely agree with Amy. Um, at Google, there's this phrase that they love to throw around called navigating ambiguity. And I felt like I was navigating ambiguity. Um, when I was in LA, I had never been to LA before, never been to the West Coast before. So my biggest concerns were around funding because I mean, the reality is it was like a six night commitment because even though the trip was Monday through Friday, we had to get there the day before to be prepared. Um, and then LA, which everyone was telling me this, I obviously hadn't been there, so I didn't know, but they're like, you need a car to get around LA. There is no like reliable public transportation system to get you in, in a timely manner from West Hollywood to Beverly Hills, to Santa Monica, to Inglewood. I mean, we were all over the place. And so I had to rent a car. I had to figure out a location to stay in. I had to figure out, you know, how to navigate these LA streets and highways. So that was a big concern of mine. But honestly, I think um, aside from just learning and exploring the industry and meeting so many great people, learning how to navigate the city where potentially you may be moving in is one of the biggest um, benefits of the trip. So I really appreciated that. And I'm here to say that it'll all work out, especially if you have an amazing cohort like I did. I absolutely loved the fellow externs of my cohort. And I, I think we looked out for each other and held each other down. So get to know your cohort as well. Yeah, I want to echo Ryan's sentiment. Like definitely, Jarisa and I were roommates and um, and it was a good time spending time with her. Like I only knew her in, this, in a class capacity, but then knowing her in a personal capacity was really fun. Um, and we got to share. So what I, I also was the recipient of the site band and I was very, very thankful for it. Um, the application process for that was very simple. Um, state your reason why you need it, kind of do an itemized breakdown of what, what you would need and what, what, how to like kind of divide the funds that way. Uh, and my stipend directly went to my flight and my room and board, like my, like just my, my rooming situation. And it was perfect. It worked out really well for that because those were like the most like expensive things to take care of. Um, so the flight was situated, the room got situated. We found a nice place and very central. And we got the place before we even knew where our schedule was, which is also kind of risky because if we were not in a, in a great place, but we also asked like our schedulers like about great places to stay, where our meet, most of our meetings were going to be at. Um, and that definitely helped kind of like narrow down where to stay. And so we ended up staying like in Beverly Hills, West Hollywood area, 
Um, and if ever, if you ever need the like, name of the place, if you get in the program, you're really interested, definitely would share you what some of the places we went to and um, the place that we stayed at, which is really nice. Um, and it's very central and local to what we need to do. And it wasn't, you definitely do need a car because one of our um, cohort members who also stayed with us had a car and all of our meetings were basically together. So we would travel with her and it was really nice to, to have that. Um, and we paid for her, we paid the gas, we paid the gas prices and paid for parking. Um, and it worked out very well um, and instead of like having the Uber. But there are some one-on-ones where you have to get to yourself. Um, I did have one-on-ones and um, since I didn't have a car myself, I'd have to Uber there. Um, but it's definitely much less expensive than me having all one-on-ones. Then I would definitely have to rent my own car <laughs> um, and figure out that. But it definitely worked out together and being with your cohort really makes everything fun um, and less stressful. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree with that. Sorry, I don't know if you um, I don't know how the experience was for the New York externs. Um, I'm really curious to hear, but well, we're actually hanging out tonight. Ew. Um, but um, I, oh, I've totally tr- lost my train of thought. Um, oh, when you're with your cohort, like when you're staying in a, a, the same place or meeting up over the course of the week, um, it's really, really awesome to be able to like, just gush about everything and say like the stressful points and the most exciting points and like what everyone learned like it's such a shared wealth of knowledge um because there is just so much to dive into and like we are meeting with so many different people um so I would definitely recommend staying near each other um if not in the same place or like just meeting up over the course um of the week um and maybe like a lot of yeah a lot of our meetings were like two or three people um I don't I had one one one-on-one over the whole week um so that was also awesome just to like yeah be able to relate everything back to everyone else um and have that shared experience all right great well thank you guys um we're going to get to my favorite part which is like learning about all the your the the um, highlights that's it I was losing my words highlights of the trip you know maybe even specific people um, some of you have talked about some of the challenges, but like what challenges, you know, like that, that you might've faced. Um, I do see there's some questions in here and I'll just address one, um, for where you can apply that is, um, at the Cauley Career Education Center website. And it opens again, um, in September of 2020, 2022. <laughs> That's it. So and for the spring of uh, 2023. So that's that. And for what to do junior year, we can talk about that afterwards. Um, we'll hold, just hold that one. And then, yes. So now I want to hear about everybody's kind of like the highlights, you know, I, and, and low lights or challenges. So over, over to you guys. Oh, I would say let's start with challenges first. Um, I think the biggest challenge was like managing our budget, like figuring out what we want to do, figuring out where to eat, especially the area we stayed in was pretty expensive. So we have to figure that out. Um, but honestly, we were so busy about today. I don't think we, we I think we didn't eat that much. <laughs> um, we did get a lot of drinks and stuff for our meetings that we had in person. Like they would buy us drinks, a little snacks or something. So that was really nice to keep us going throughout the day. But you are pretty busy. Um, and so you're going from meeting to meeting. Like as an example of the schedule is like one time we had a meeting from nine to 10 and then we have to travel to we had a, we'd have another meeting at 11 so we have to use those 30 minutes to travel to get our location at 11 or if we have zoom so a lot of it was hybrid because of covid it was like 9 to 10 10 to 11 11 12 12 to so 12 to 1 and those type of and like all the order was just long but um back to back to back but it definitely uh, i would say that thinking about your budget thinking about travel was important um I don't, also thought like thinking, putting in some like, you know, relaxation time, some me time, some one, like one-on-one time to like kind of debrief with your friends is also a little hard. So just trying to make sure you're using those times or whatever pocket time you have to, to spend time with everyone else or just to relax or to sleep. Um, because even though it was like nine to five, the day is really long. Um, and then you have the eat, you think you have the day, but you probably want to sleep. Um, but I also encourage you, if you can, if you have the energy, if you're up for it, to kind of do some exploring and walking around um, to see what the area is like, especially in LA. Cause that was my first time there, my first time out west. 
went to Ohio. I've never been past Ohio. So it was really nice to go there and explore the area and see what it's about. I would just jump in and say, as far as challenges, honestly, my challenges were front loaded. So I felt like once I secured funding, once I realized where I was staying um, and how I was gonna navigate the city of LA, once I got to the trip, it just felt like a breeze. I just felt like everything fell into place because I did all the work beforehand. Um, like Aaron, I had never been west of Chicago. So <laughs> like that was a whole new world to me and I absolutely loved it, like 11 out of 10 trip. My birthday is in May, we graduate in May and I wanna go back in May, I probably will. Um, but it was amazing. So I would just say the more work that you do in the beginning, um, if you're anything like me, the better it'll be for you on the actual trip. And I'll just say really quickly what my highlight was. I had, I mean, Monday through Friday was just a highlight. I had a great time. Sunday through Friday, actually, because I got there a day before and I went to Disney. I had some friends from Georgetown meet me in LA and we went to Disney before. I was exhausted, but eh, you have to do what you have to do. It was spring break after all. But my highlight as far as a, a meeting, um, I met the chief marketing officer of MTV. Uh, for, it was like my last meeting of, a day, of the day, I think it was a Wednesday. And it was so great. It was supposed to be just an hour. We ended up staying there for like three hours. He invited his wife. And now he, like I have his personal phone number. We're really close. So it's just amazing because you go into it thinking that you're gonna develop professional connections and you just really never know who you're gonna bond with. And now when he comes back to DC, we're supposed to have dinner with, again, with him and his wife. So that was definitely my highlight. I guess I could throw my highlight in there. I forgot that. I was thinking about the challenges and stuff, but those are like mine said, really like the work, the, the challenges kind of happened beforehand. Um, we were all kind of stressed maybe a week or so before, like, where are we going to stay? What are we going to do? Like, like having that type of energy, but I'm after like figuring that out, um, definitely getting there kind of like relieved another thing was like attire thinking about what I was going to wear was another stressful thing for me um so I don't know if we can talk about that a little bit but we're figuring, figuring out what to wear like asking the schedule what to wear especially when the culture is different in different places like New York is a bit um just differently than LA thinking about that um and so I was really stressed about that in the beginning but figured that out um and try to figure out how to get everything, transport everything, because I picked up a lot of clothes. And I was like, I don't know, I, I need to have options. But um, everything works out once you figure out what to wear. In LA, they would have told us to wear like dark pants and um, some like, nice dress shoes or nice shoes and a collar shirt or uh, a, a blazer. Um, pants that then you can wear jeans. Jeans are fine, absolutely fine. Um, and just dress neat and, and just, just neat and, neat and nice. Um, and that's pretty much it. Everyone's very black, very chill. Some people wore sweatpants to our meetings. So it was really, it was a really chill vibe there for that. Um, so that's like mainly on the close front. My, my personal highlight is I met with a recent alum. Her name is Alexis Jones and she went, she graduated here in 2019. Um, and it was really nice to speak to someone who, who recently graduated and who's on also on the rise themselves um, to kind of get their highlight because their ear is closer to the ground. So they kind of know like what it's like to be us. Uh, talked a lot about um, the agency experience and what it's like to be um, at a talent agency and, and how that's a good way to get your foot in the door or finding a desk is a good way to um, get your foot in the door, being someone's assistant um, and getting those types of tips where we got from everyone. But I also had like this like nice kind of, she showed me, she's in development with Francis Kenny, um, who is a showrunner. He was a showrunner for Insecure, um, his production company. And just showing me this slate that they have, that they have and just, just breaking down what it looks like in development. Um, even offering to read some of my stuff when I like finish it, um, asking me to send a resume, just being very, um, very, very helpful in that regard and kind of, you know, relating to me because you know she knows the struggle. Okay, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> um, Alex, 
Yeah, no, one challenge I dealt with was the one. So first of all, like, I cannot believe the superhuman work that what my scheduler Grace did just in terms of sch- putting together 20 meetings, just like superhuman feet, really. Um, just out of necessity, a lot of my meetings were in person and a lot were virtual in the same day. And so one thing I was worried about from the beginning was how am I going to um find a like virtual meeting friendly space in the midst of all these in-person meetings. And so I was, I was originally planning to like frantically Uber back to the house that I was staying at in the middle of the day to take them. Uh, but then, um, uh, Katie Stanton, who helped run the New York cohort, sent out a list of like virtual meeting friendly New York coffee shops. And so what I ended up doing was, um, I found one of those and just took meetings in the back of those multiple times. Like I took a meeting with the president of adult swim in a coffee shop. And, you know, I kind of, I felt the need to caveat. I'm like, look, I just, this, I explained, (laughs) it's like, look, I would rather be in like this perfect like terrarium of a space, but this is just how it is. And he was very understanding. Um, But yeah, I would definitely recommend just understand, especially I haven't been to LA, but I presume the culture is the same. Like the cities are full of weirdos. Like I promise you by taking a virtual meeting in a coffee shop, you're not crazy. Yeah. Turn down the social anxiety. You'll, you're fine. So just feel free to take meetings in coffee shops, locate ones where there isn't a lot of background noise. Like I've noticed like Pret, both Pret and Starbucks tended to have a lot of like loud music and hustle and bustle in the back. So there is like a very special brand of like a climate of coffee shops that don't have those look up those in advance. The one I went to in New York is called think coffee. There's one on wall street that I went to for a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, try to look up those don't take them in pretz don't take them in um starbucks's just because they just tend to have the really loud music on which is not helpful um but yeah if you don't worry about taking them in coffee shops and make sure the internet's stable and ultimately you're fine yeah that's actually a good point and i, I will say for those of you in feature i am a, i'm my feel is that for a lot of media and entertainment there's gonna be a lot more hybrid and that's here to stay and so like zoom calls are probably something you're you're going to if you apply and you get it you might still see that happening um, pretty consistently. So thanks for for that, Alex. Dritza, Amy, anything that you want to add to like challenges, highlights? Um, this is kind of just like a little quip that Emma said, um, one of the girls on um, like that we were staying with, Erin and I. Um, and she would always say um, that we're going to be having a lot of fun in about 10 years. And like getting your foot in the door is like they everyone said that that's the hardest part. Um, But then once you're there, you essentially have to like outwork everyone around you. Um, At least that's the culture in LA that like that was, that rang very clearly, I think throughout most of our meetings. Um, But then once you've done all of the grunt work and like paid your dues, as everyone says, like you really start to like land on your own two feet and like make creative decisions or whatever, like whatever you're involved with. Um, But I just think that's like, that's exactly what it feels like is like yeah in about 10 years we're all going to be having a lot of fun and like we're all going to know each other like the connections you make at the ground level like those people are going to be working in different um like if they stay in entertainment like different companies um that can help you like with decisions that you're making at your own company like you're going to have all these connections that you made like doing all of the hard part um when you're all old and gray and rolling in money Uh, yeah, I hope that happens for us. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, or going back a little bit to what Aaron was saying earlier, it was so nice meeting people at, like, different points in their career. Because um, we did, like, meet a lot of, like, really, really cool people who were, like, CEOs or, like, at the heads of their companies. And, like, it was really interesting hearing, like, their journeys. But at the same time, it's, like, when they got into the industry, it was, like, different from us now. And so hearing from like recent grads and people who are just a couple years older than us, um, it was like where I felt like um, I learned the most maybe in terms of like, at least um, in terms of like what my next steps could be and like what going into these industries are like, like what entry level jobs are available, like um, when they, when are they available, how do you apply and that kind of stuff. Um, and I also just wanted to um second Jerisa's point about how like um I was really worried about networking at first because I was like oh this is kind of like a 
felt like so formal and businessy and it felt like it was a means to an end rather than something to be enjoyed but like this experience has really taught me that like it is actually also just so fun like meeting everyone and like if your approach is like not that I want something out of this interview but like um to like just learn and to just be curious I felt like that was like when I had the best conversations um and so, yeah, I feel like it also kind of like changed my mind on networking because I think it was really just about like meeting people and trying to like find genuine connections. Thank you, Amy. That's really helpful. Being authentic, being curious. That's really the kind of the best way to, to do, to, to build relationships, which is, that's how I think of networking is relationship building. Um, Briefly before we get to the to the question in the chat, I just want to someone mentioned about dress, and that's true. Like I, I want people's impressions about dress. Um, we covered it briefly, but New York and LA, different cultures. Erin, I think um, just to, to I think what you had said, it's like you can wear jeans, but they, it's it's like you got to have like nice style. So it's nice jeans, nice shirt, blazer kind of thing. So you have to look really put together. Is did I capture what you said? Okay. <laughs> Okay, Ryan, did you have something like your Jaritza? Because you guys were also in LA, so curious about like your feelings dressing wise. Yeah, I agree with what Aaron said. Um, I would say I was the only guy on our LA trip, I think. So like the dress was kind of different, but um, I remember the first day in LA, we had met at these offices. It's like animation startup, studio um, startup offices. And we were all like, we probably all put on our best dress the first day. We were all in blazers. Like I walked in and I was like, wow, I'm glad I picked this day to wear my blazer because they look good. Um, but after that, I would say that we kind of got the feel um, after the first day of what the people we were meeting with, how they were dressed and what they were wearing. Um, I would say that I always tried to, I erred on the side of being overdressed and underdressed. So just because I was speaking to you know, an executive and they were in jeans and a sweatshirt or something like that. I never showed up in a hoodie or anything like that. But um, I think that had I done the New York trip, I definitely would have been dressed very differently. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty casual. As long as you throw in a blazer, throw in a sweater, um, I think it's fine. Sneakers were fine for us. They knew that we were gonna be running around all day. But yeah, I agree with Aaron. Just yeah. to add, or, oh, sorry, we had like a group Zoom meeting the first day and all of the LA people were in like pastel blazers and everyone was like looking really good. And I was like in my sweater trying to figure out. But like, I think for New York, I think actually it's just maybe after the pandemic, after Zoom, people are maybe a lot more casually dressed. Um, I know that we talked about like being kind of more formal in New York, but I found that like, um, I met people kind of in film, publishing, journalism, um, and and theater, and everyone was dressed like I guess more on the casual side than it was formal. But I would also say that like I would err on being more overdressed than than not. Oh, I have a comment to make on the shoe front. Like I, I don't like heels, generally speaking. I have these cool shoes that are like a mix between heels and flats. Um, and I thought like on day one, I could get away with those and have the perfect happy medium. Like, no, they didn't. Like the fact of the presence of any heel plus any substantive walking from coffee shop to coffee shop was like miserable. So, um, you know, don't wear tennis shoes, but if you can find shoes that are unironically 300% comfortable to walk in, and, and don't clash enormously with your outfit just wear those I implore you like it is it, it you you get to 4 p.m of walking from place to place and just if your shoes aren't a hundred percent comfortable it's awful um so I just wore like I have some nice they're not quite boots, but they're, they're almost like leather, wa nice walking shoes that I wear anyway. And so I just, w I had a, like a suit that I wore almost every day and then just those shoes and I was good to go, but don't pretend that you're going to be able to handle walking sh uh, shoes that are not walking shoes. <laughs> don't pretend you'll be able to handle shoes that are only a little bit uncomfortable. Just make yourself make again, like treat yourself to the little luxuries to make your life easy. And one of those is just don't wear tennies, don't wear, you know, um, Birkenstocks, but wear shoes that are nice, and, but also comfortable to walk in. 
And I, and I should say, it's like, you should LA or New York, you should always come with like, like a, you know, something nice, you know, always come nice because at least like you can always air to that, you know, like if, if you're, especially if you're seeing senior management, um, you can go like that. And then it just becomes, I get it. It's a little bit more challenging as you're, as you're navigating. Um, and I think a hundred percent, the pandemic has changed things, especially if you're meeting with people informally in a coffee shop, they're not dressed up, they're in jeans. So this is evolving a little bit as we, as, as, a, as the workplace culture evolves because of the hybrid style. Um, it is 1250. So I want to get to the, the one question and I kind of want to, with that, the question is, uh, you know, what do you do this summer before to kind of stand out? But um, do you, like, what, what are just thoughts on, on, on that? Do you feel like that you ha had to do something your junior year or what do you think that was just a good way to um, maybe build, build experience? I would just jump in quickly and say that, I mean, as Georgetown students, we're naturally overachievers, um, achievers and then overachievers. So I would say whatever you've been doing is probably gonna set you up um, well, like for success in the, in the application process and in the interview process. I can share what I did um, and my story might be a little bit different just because I knew coming into Georgetown that I was gonna study marketing and that I wanted to work in the industry. So everything I've done to this point may seem like it had a through line because of that. I just saw opportunities that um, catered to either both, either marketing or entertainment or both of them. So I studied abroad this summer after my freshman year, I went to Barcelona with Georgetown. The following summer I interned at Nickelodeon and then this past junior summer I interned at YouTube. And so I think just having those connections all or those experiences all in the industry on paper, obviously they just look like, you know, this is an entertainment guy so if you're already at the point where you know that you want to work in the industry and you've been having internship experiences or uh, apprenticeships or you've been a PA on set, then that's just going to set you up well, because this is obviously an entertainment focused program. So I wouldn't be concerned or feel the pressure to do something in addition to what you've already been doing. I second that. Um... As I think I mentioned earlier, like you look at my resume, it's pretty tangential to um, entertainment and like it's more like literary focus. I'm an English major, but like you have more transferable skills than you think you do. Um, like you gain so many critical skills going to a school like Georgetown, like period. Um, and that is something that I have had to learn to like be able to market and like be able to like sell myself to people um, when they're looking for like Oh, like there's just an open position or something or any in any case or making connections um but on the flip side of that if you haven't done any of that like you're already a step ahead of a lot of people um just by like going to this info session and like applying and trying your hand at it um because like, like you have transferable skills like there are a lot of things that even if your stuff that you've done isn't related there are a lot of things that you'll be able to like sell you know I was kind of discovering this as well because I was like interested in many different um, industries, but I haven't had experiences in like all of those industries. But as I was speaking to the people, I was realizing that like, like so many um, of the skills that I learned doing one thing um, is really uh, similar to all of the skills I need for another job. And so I think like focusing on like what or like understanding like what you are actually good at um, and like maybe better than other people at. Um, is like a really good uh, thing to do early on, I feel. I also think like, you know, take advantage of your classes and stuff that you have here. Um, if you really want to explore something, you're like, oh, this might look interesting. This is like creative and filmy. I don't know. Like you can think, take advantage of classes or even the classes you've already taken. Um, think about what creative outlet you've done there or not even have to be creative like what did you learn what did you what are you good at what do you want to do I think that's like the most important question to think about and ask yourself um and for me like I just I knew that I always wanted to do entertainment stuff so I've had internships in development and in entertainment develop internships like that um and I've also taken a lot of script writing classes so it's kind of figuring out what it is yeah student clubs are very very important um 
whatever clubs you're interested in and kind of like maximize that. And it's okay to like stretch some things a little bit, like like pull some things out, like, all right, I, I, I mean, maybe you're writing for a paper, you're writing, maybe you're writing a paper for a class or something and it's, it's, it's allowing you to like flex your creative muscles a little bit. Draw on that, like draw on those experiences and kind of like, well, anything you do is very, is very important. Like what you I think sometimes your audio just cut out. So it seems like you were going, you're, I, but I think, I think we got you to the end. I think, I think, I think your audio is gone now, <laughs> but thank you. We got most of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is my audio. No, you're back. I don't know. I can't hear myself. Only voice. So. <laughs> I know. I got you. Okay. I, I, we're good. Thanks. Okay. Um, any, any other reflections in that way? Okay. All right. Well, folks, we're at 1255 and I really want to honor my, my externs time, thank them for joining and sharing their experience. It's always so helpful to hear. For those of you who are on the call, just take note of the various faces and names. I'm sure they'd be happy. You know, it's a small group. Like if you had questions, feel free to reach out to them. I'm just going to say that because it's not, a, it's a, we're not talking about 50 people here. We're talking about a smaller group. Um, so um, for those of you who are joining us, thank you. But if you can, um, you can kindly leave us now and I'm going to, I'm going to finish our conversation with, with the externs, but thank you so much for joining.